Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about fibered categories. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to, uh, uh, the goal is to answer three questions. So the first question is, what is a fibered category? Okay. Um, the other question is, what is descent data? And what is the category of descent data associated to a fibered category? And why do we care? Okay, so I'm going to first talk about why we care. So, why do we care? So, um, basically, there, there's lots of different objects that are uh, from algebraic geometry that can be glued together from small pieces. So, let me give you a list of things that can be glued together. Okay, so the, the first thing is schemes, right? So you can take a collection of schemes and um, and you can say say affine schemes and and you can glue them along certain open subsets right and making the identification of the certain su certain open subsets allows you to make a, a a a full scheme. I mean there are already full schemes, but you can you can piece them together and make a full scheme. Okay, you can you can another example is is uh, vector bundles. You can um, look look at local trivializations for vector bundles. I'll talk about this. You can glue together morphisms of schemes. Okay, so um, I'll talk about that too. Um, sheaves, so if you have sheaves that are defined on open sets and um, you have some compatibility between them, uh, then you can, you can glue them together to get a, sheem, a sheaf on, a, on a, the full scheme. Okay, so we can we can glue together deformations, deformations, let's say of say schemes, and let's say from an F from a, a local art and ring to another local art and ring, and uh, another example is uh, you can glue together principal bundles. So these are the same thing as torsors. Okay, so these are. Uh, all examples of things that can be glued in algebraic geometry. Okay, so let's do some examples. Uh, so how to glue a scheme. Uh, uh, I have to glue together a scheme. Okay, so we need some data, and in this data we'll just have, um, so let's say like affine open sets, so with some index set i, um, we'll have some distinguished open subschemes, okay, so these could be, say, defined from principal localizations, so Okay, and then there's this gluing data. So we'll take some isomorphisms in here, and these things will satisfy uh, 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 co-cycle condition. Okay, and so once we have all this data, we can glue by forming X to be a disjoint union of these guys. And then uh, and we have an, uh, this relation here, and this thing identifies uh, x i j with x uh, with x j i. Okay, so these things uh, have these open subset sub schemes which are identified here. Okay, so this is a this is the first example for schemes. Let's do another example. Uh, let's say uh, vector bundles. Uh, 
so vector bundle gluing. Okay, um, so here uh, we need to specify the data. So we're going to fix um, an open cover. Okay, we're going to fix a physical scheme above our fixed scheme. Okay, um, and then we're going to we're going to have some isomorphisms. So this is an isomorphism of schemes here to affine space. Okay, so we have these three things. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, and then they need to satisfy some conditions. Okay, so, um, so, so we have this isomorphism here. They need to, the, the condition that they need to satisfy is that this transition map from is actually given by an invertible matrix. Uh, GLN UIJ. So here. So, so having this data, okay, one can check that the this this um, this physical scheme here can be given the structure uh, of a vector bundle, which means that it's sheaf of sections of this. So sections of this, uh, we can actually equip it with a the the, the that set with a multiplication, right? The lo even local sections, right? So it'll be a, a sheaf of OX modules. So um, yeah, we can equip it with it. Sorry, an addition and then a, a, like a scalar multiplication. Okay. Okay, so uh, last example, how to glue morphisms. Okay, so, um, so again, the data. Will you fix a cover? This is a cover. Okay, and then we're going to fix a collection or, or I mean, give, what a give, fix, whatever. Okay, uh, so collections of maps, let's say to Y. Okay, and then we're going to have some conditions on these guys. So, so this thing here, this is UI intersect UJ, or if we're working over another site, it looks like this. Okay, so uh, we include into these sets, and then we have this map FI, and this is the map FJ, and this diagram commutes. Okay, and actually this is um, uh, so yeah, so this equalizes these these two maps. Okay, so these conditions tell us that. Um, Okay, so this is the descent data for, or this will be the gluing data for a morphism, okay? And um, uh, these Fi, so in this case, these Fi glue together uh, to give a map uh, such that um, uh, F restricted to UI is equal to FI. Okay, so alternatively, okay, so we have this thing. So the alternative viewpoint is that uh, this association from uh, an open set, so this thing is in uh, the Zariski site of X, okay, and so it maps to. Um, the morphisms from U to X, morphisms of schemes, and this association is actually a sheaf on the Zariski site. So when you have 
uh, things that agree locally, right? So if they agree locally, then uh, they it'll lift to something that uh, uh, that's defined globally. So it, it satisfies that sheaf condition. So this is a sheaf. This is just saying that this association is a sheaf. Okay, so uh, so yeah, this is how you glue, glue things together, gluing morphisms. Okay, so we had that list of abstract things that you could glue, um, and it turns out that um, uh, so uh, uh, so I'm going to answer the second question. Maybe this is the third question. Okay, so we had that abstract, the, the, I mean, those lists of, of, of things that have gluing that you can glue in algebraic geometry. Well, it turns out that there's, um, there's, a, there's a definition, so like kind of an axiomatization of, of those things. And the axiomatization of, of things that are like gluable uh, are fibered categories. Okay, so, well, you need them for it. I, I, this will become clear in a bit. So a fibered category uh, is a pre-sheaf. So this is a fibered category on X. Is a pre-sheaf, uh, okay, from this, these are the open sets with the, the morphisms being inclusions. So this is like, okay, so this is actually a site. Um, to the category of categories. So this is the this is just the category of categories where morphisms are functors. Okay. So okay. So first of all, it's a pre-sheaf um, such that okay. So let me let me give some things. So being a pre-sheaf, you're going to have two things. So first of all, for every u, for every open set, uh, we we get associated. Uh, category okay so on the open sets we have a category and um, and when we have an inclusion right uh, then this thing gives a morphism or a functor from one category so to the other category okay so that's that um, so this is a fibered category uh, Okay, so this, uh, sorry, this is, this is, I'm not done. Uh, this thing here, these are just the, the pre-sheaf axioms, right? Okay, so it's just saying that it's a functor. Okay, so it has this with a natural, with a set of natural transformations. Uh, uh, formations. Okay, and for each i and j, we have from the pullback of the composite is the, uh, well, the, the composite of the pullback switched, okay? Uh, and they, this, these, these transitions, uh, they satisfy certain axioms, okay? And the axiom is that whenever we have an inclusion Inclusions like this, I, J, K, for all of these guys, okay, we are going to have uh, maps like this. So this is kind of complicated, but I mean, it's the only thing, so when you write this down, okay, so now we can look here. Okay, so how do these split up? So the only thing that makes sense here is we have tau i, j, and k, okay? Uh, similarly here, it's breaking up the other way, so this is tau i, j, k, okay? And here, um, so this is this one splitting up, so this is um, uh, i star, and then we have tau of j, k, and then here we have k star, and now we have this one, and this is a uh, tau of i, j. Okay, so this is this axiom. So this is kind of like a uh, sheaf of categories, right? So it's a pre-sheaf of categories. And then replacing the sheaf axioms is, is this uh, crazy 
uh, condition between the transition uh, data. Okay, so this is these, these transition things. So since we're looking at a category of categories, this already becomes like a, a two-category thing, where you're looking at uh, morphisms between morphisms. So, um, okay, so, so we have some examples. Okay, so, um, so this, this example comes up in deformation theory. Um, actually, let me do that one second. Um, so, uh, so let's take this. So, so this is the category of, so this is the, 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 the uh, fiber functor of quasi-coherent sheaves on X. And so um, Q co uh, X of, let's say an open subset U is just gonna be Q co of uh, U. So this is just gonna be the quasi, the category of quasi-coherent sheaves of quasi-coherent. Uh, sheaves on you. Okay. Um, okay, and then so the pullbacks in this this category are, are the obvious ones. Okay, so this is the first example. Um, so, okay, so if we take X to be a scheme, I'm going to do another one. So now I'm going to do the deformation. Uh, uh, so this is a scheme over A. So A is an art and local ring. Okay. Um, well, yeah, this could be like a field. I'll say this is like a field. This could be like FP. Okay. And A prime is a, a, a no potent extension of A. So this could be like Z mod P squared or my favorite or FP, let's say T mod T squared. So these are like infinitesimals. Um, okay, so uh, okay, so then we define. Okay, so a deformation of uh, uh, X uh, to A prime is a, a scheme. So let's just put it this way. So we're, we're gonna look at diagrams like this. X prime to spec A prime. And so there's a closed immersion here. So uh, X, okay. So we're gonna fix this thing. This thing has a structure map. And so uh, there's closed immersion here. So we're gonna look at, so we can look at deformations like this. Okay, so, um, okay, so we're just gonna look at lifts of, 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 of x to uh, something over a prime okay in morphisms so this this the set of deformations uh, forms a category so it's actually a category of deformations and morphisms are, are morphisms from uh, these guys which respect these these inclusions here okay so um, okay so we are going to define now something local so we're, what we're going to do is we want to study deformations and um, we want to study them by gluing local deformations together. And so we form a, a, a fibered category, okay? And this category is going to be denoted like this, A prime, okay? And this is the fibered category of uh, deformations. Of x over a, okay, and um, and when we take an open set, um, uh, what we look at is deformations like this. So we take a another open set. So we just take deformations like in the above sense, right? Um, so the, and we're going to take this to be flat. So usually this is taken to be flat or smooth or something, 
right? And we look at it modulo isomorphism, okay? So, and I believe the pullbacks here are given by base change, but, okay, so this, this one, this category will come up, or this five functor comes up when you want to study um, uh, deformations of, so we want to glue together a global deformation, like a deformation of the whole thing, by gluing together little local deformations. Um, okay. These examples. Okay, so so we have our fiber functors. It remains to answer. Now the other question is, what is is descent data? Okay, so um, so we're actually going to make a category of, of potentially glueable things. So things that could be glueable together. Okay, so so in this setup, we, we always fix a covering. Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna fix a, a an F. So this is going to be a fiber functor. or a fiber category. On X. Okay. And we're going to make a category here uh, of a category of descent data. Data for F. with respect to this open covering U. Okay, so I'm going to define what this, this category of descent data is. Okay, so in order to define a category, we need to define the objects. So the objects are, are pairs, like this. Okay, and um, so what is this guy? This guy, this Fi, is a bunch of objects, okay, for one for each guy in the cover, and these Fij's are the transition data between these objects, and the transition data is, well, uh, uij, okay, it's just a map between the restrictions. So this is an identification on these open subsets. And then um, again, so we have we have a, this transition data and, and, it, um, and it needs to satisfy uh, an additional condition. The condition, this condition is the co-cycle condition, JK. So this is the co-cycle condition. Okay, so we have our objects, these pairs of things. So they're things that you kind of glue together. And morphisms of these guys, okay, well, they're given by a collections of morphisms. So here we have these Fi's, we have these Fij's. Let's say we have Fi primes, and then we have Fij primes. So these are two objects in this category of descent data. And these GIs, okay, so this is what a morphism looks like. These GIs are maps uh, between these guys, and they satisfy uh, a certain diagram. So the diagram looks like this, okay? Uh, G I U I J. Okay, so uh, so this is just this thing just restricted to U I J. Okay, and now we're just going to do the transition here, J U I J. And so now we do G J U I J, and then F. Uh, so this is F J prime U I J here, and this would be F I J prime. 
Okay, so these guys are compatible with um, so these guys are compatible with the transition data. So it's just a morphism which kind of respects the transitions. Okay, so so this page, what it so what do we do? We we define this category of descent data. So these are the things that are potentially gluable. Okay, so like on the examples that we had, we had these things that we were gluing together. And this is the abstract concept of, of, of things that, of how to glue, uh, of what it means to have gluing data. Okay, so, um, okay, so like, like I said, we have this descent data. And this is just gluing data. Okay, so we are going to show now um, how to associate to a global object descent data. Okay, so um, so so let's fix an, a global object now. So this is uh, like a quasi-coherent sheaf on a scheme. Okay. And we'll fix a cover. Okay. And uh, so this is a covering. And uh, and now um, uh, I'm going to define the descent functor. Okay. For uh, f with respect to you it is a functor from the global objects to the category of descent data here let's call this the descent functor and what it does is it takes this guy and it's going to map it to its restrictions and some canonical um, uh, uh, so this is f restricted, yeah, so to ui, okay? And, and some canonical transitions. So these things are actually given from the tau ij's here. And this thing here is really i star f. I, I wrote the, the um, uh, restriction there like, like that. So I guess i is really the, well, i is the inclusion for ui. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't have used i, but it's okay. Okay. Okay, so now I can define what a stack is. Okay, so we have this descent data, and we've, we've shown how to uh, associate to a global object a, a collection of descent data which lives in this descent category. So a stack is a fibered functor, or a fibered category, uh, f, category of categories such that um, uh, there exists a cover a covering uh, where um, this functor is an equivalence of categories So this is the definition of a stack. Okay, I, I think um, uh, so. Uh, let me just let me just say one more thing. Um, so so this is a equivalence of categories. So uh, equivalence of categories is is just really it has to have three things. Um, it has to be essentially surjective, full, and faithful. Okay, and so essentially surjective means that for everything in the target. Um, there exists a guy in the source, right, uh, such that the image of the, the, the guy in the source is isomorphic to the guy in the target. Okay. Full means that uh, the maps on the HOM sets are um, surjective, and faithful means that the maps on the HOM sets are, are injective. Okay. So 
um, another way of saying this is this is the the equivalence of categories is equivalent to the existence of another functor going the other way. So here, right, um, which is naturally equivalent to when I compose it with the descent functor. Oh, uh, so this is the descent functor. So that when I compose it with the descent, so I take the descent functor and then I compose it with the other one, and that should be naturally equivalent to the identity. It shouldn't be the identity on the nose, but it should be isomorphic to the identity. So, um, so that's that's that, and that's what it, that's what a, a stack is. So hopefully uh, later I'll, I'll get to talk more about um, uh, these things. So like there's yeah.